We are oh, unmuted oh. and live. Oh my gosh, we're live. We are. We are live on the oh internet. My it's God. just the brew of us. It's just. It's just us brew. Are yeah. we gonna keep doing this pun? Yeah, we, we will. Oh no, we, I don't we think will, I can keep up a pun. We will, we will definitely keep this pun yeah. up. Uh, but hey, everybody, this is a very different brew, haha, because uh, we kind of had, I mean, well, we, two life of us, got in the way. Life got in the way. Usually we don't do it if three of us aren't available, but uh, Chris and I pitched an idea. While well, brew, haha, the very first episode was Kyle brewing blueberry mead with me. Yeah. Uh, the very the way brew, haha, got started is Chris and I, years ago, about every two, three weeks, payday time yeah. periods. We would get about forty dollars a piece and buy weird beer, and get mm. make a charcuterie board and yeah. just have a beer sampling and enjoying food. Yeah, and this kind of like got into our beer brewing escapades at that time as well because we we kind of became hyper fixated on like craft beer for a while in the process of making craft beer and. When when everyone kind of dipped out, we, we we were already talking about doing something like this anyway. Yeah. So we were like, well, 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 we might as well stream well. it. I mean, Dude. the next the gonna be honest with you, the brouhaha after this is going to be cool. all the crap that's been left in the back of my fridge for the two years we've been doing this. Yeah, we're also we're probably gonna do like a truth or dab situation because people want to bring in the hot sauce shit. Uh, again. I bought I bought blank cards for us to make our own. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, uh, we are going to sample some of these uh, newer beers. Uh, let's see. I'm going, since I'm closer, I'm going to pick the first one, okay? Yeah, go ahead, pick the first one. Uh, I know there's I two. Thought you were grabbing the monk beer for me. No, no, we got two that we have to wait to be last. You know what? I'm going to grab one with a unique. Oh, uh, okay. This is Burial. Surf Wax. Surf Wax India Pale Ale. Uh... Beer causes hesitation. You want the ultimate. You got to be willing to pay the ultimate price. Ain't it wild? Uh, it's too far away. Why be a servant to the law when you can be the be its master? I know you want to be be it so bad. It's like the acid in your mouth. But are you cro or are you crazy enough? Sorry, this thing's covered in like condensation. Show those guys that are inching their way on the freeways in their mental or their metal coffins that the human spirit is still alive. We only live to get radical mosaic. Oh, then it goes into the uh, it, mosaic citra and Simcoe. Lots of barley, touch of wheat. The sea swallows the sun and who knows if the, it will rise again. Yaya Condios or Via Condios, six point eight percent alcohol per volume. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to say is we split a can. <laughs> no, we're going to do this. We're going to take a whole can each. Oh God. Uh, brewed by Burial Brew Company in Asheville, North Carolina. Okay, all the surf talk made me think it was going to be like California, but it's North Carolina. I mean, uh, North Car surf there is surfing on the Atlantic coast. But most of the time, when you think of someone like you think of California, yeah, so. Washington. Go, on, go ahead and grab it. The, the artwork on this is pretty dope. It's like a, looks like a sea slug going through like, or an eel going through a melted skull. Kind of metal. Oh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't going to pour it in a glass. I was going to take it straight out the can. Well, but you know geez. what? I'm, I'm trying to be sophisticated here and you're oh, like... You're telling me I'm the heathen? It's like, no, Chris, you're going to get, you're going to get wasted. Mm, yes, that is definitely Simco hops. Uh, That's definitely a hop. You can uh, you can smell it. That is definitely an IPA. You can definitely smell the the Simcoe because uh, Simcoe and Cascade have very similar. Well, mm. I, if I remember right, have very similar notes. Mm. Honestly, it's not bad. I, like I'm gonna put it out there. You know, it's not. It's yeah. not that bad. I mean, a okay. lot of IPAs are like drinking a bag of grass clippings. Yeah, the thing is, it's like when we like were in our twenties, mm -hmm. IPAs were the big deal. 
Like everyone was making their own IPAs. And double IPAs were the big one. And, yeah, Imperial IPAs, and they would get, go into some crazy shit, chocolate IPAs, all that. And they all just tasted like grass. And it got really frustrating to find a really good IPA, but now it's kind of... It was in the hazy IPAs for a while. And now it's kind of in the uh, sours in terms of popular beers. So I think the IP, the good IPA is coming back. Yeah. I, I'm going to say also, I think this is the smoked Gouda. Yeah. Ah. Hmm. It plays with the IPA well. Hmm. We're going to be foodies this entire time, aren't we? We're kind of doing our own version of a fucking mukbang. I'm not going to chew next to the microphone. Yeah, I'm... One of the, okay, so we're set up for our game tomorrow. Ooh. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Truffle salami. That's nice. I like that. I'm happy They're with these truffles and everything. Remember when truffles were like rare as fuck? Yeah. Now everything has truffles. Did, it, did, did, is we, there like start, a, did we start growing them in labs? I don't know. But yeah, we're actually set up for our D&D game. So we actually have a... We have a full spectrum of sound equipment in this room. Hopefully it sounds all right. Yeah. But yeah, I, no, I like this. I, I realize that having a full beer... Yeah, you might be right. We might be going to partial beers on this next one. We'll split them. Yeah. Right for those pint cans. Yeah. And Because I'm also looking at those monk beers. Yeah, we have to kind of drink those. Yeah, like, once those, once those pop, you can't stop, so to speak. I mean, I guess, you know, the cans, you know. But, like, the cans are... Okay, now, now, thank you. Thank you. Shit, though. We also made sure my very loving wife in the other room got a section of the charcuterie board before we did. Let's see what is this? Well, oh, that's the hunter's cheese. Mm. You want some of the hunter's cheese? Mm. What? Oh, that's smoked. Here, this one. Mm. Yeah, some of the black wax is still on there. Mm. We gotta go back there for some cheese, man. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh geez. You good? It didn't want to be bit through. Ah. I yeah, we're sitting here having to finish things before we move on, but I'm going to pick one. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to pick the closest one. Because it's a great rap beer. Show Pony Bohemian Style Pilsner. 4.5 alcohol by volume. Not going to lie, I bought that for the can. Look at the sticker. Yeah, the no, artwork on that is great. I love this artwork. It has like kind of an old school sort of uh, western look. It almost reminds me of something from New Vegas. Honestly, because... that's what I was thinking is we could drink that when we... Uh, I mean, we're going to be... We have another game coming up soon that is going to be Fallout themed. But I think we're going to go that it's going to be just a audio format. Yeah, we're going to try the audio format. Cause... Cause there, was everybody agreeing to do it at home or do it here or were we going to do it online? I wanted to do it here. I like... Like, personally, I like online games, but I love the environment of... Plus, like, we get to hang out with John. Yeah, we get to hang out with John, and we all get to come in here and just have a good time, which is what I like doing. Yeah. Uh, like, when it comes... Like, if I were to have my pick of D&D, &D, like, if it's in person or online, it's in person. Oh, my goodness. He is, like, devouring that cheese. Give me one of them breeze. That's why I, I serve you first, dude. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, give me a little bit of that prosciutto with the... That's prosciutto, but I'll take the prosciutto. Oh, the prosciutto's in the middle. Yeah. yeah. I was going to put some of the salami with it, because Bree's usually... Mm. Bree's pretty... Oh, you left the wax on it. I don't care if anybody watches. We're eating good food, hanging out. I, yeah, I was about to say, it's, just, uh, it's, it's not really like a structured episode. It's like, we just wanted to do something. Well, half the time, we don't do an actual brewing episode, which we need to do soon. 
Mm. Uh, we just have the beers and do goofy shit and yeah. talk about stuff. And like, this is what, like, we're having something good right now instead of us having to put painfully hot or nasty things in our yeah. mouth. Like, I will say this the hot wings did not mess me up as much as the soda episode. Yeah, you said the soda episode was awful. The, the reason the soda episode was bad for me is because we drank, in the course of an hour, we each drank about six sodas. Ugh. Maybe maybe five sodas. But it was all cane syrup sodas, which are good, but they also... It tastes better than... But it's also, hey... It's heavy. You want to sit with a whole lot of fucking sugar in your tummy? Yeah. I, 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 had, I, had, I had soda sugar shits the next day. Like, it was all gas... And no terrible. breaks. Yeah, it was all gas, no breaks. Like, we played, uh, like, we did. I was so glad we had a day in between that and Daryl won because everybody would have hated me because it was just nothing but non stop machine gun toots. But yeah, that's what we're playing tomorrow is Daryl won. We have everything. I, you can't even see anything set up here. Nope, there's reasons for that. Yeah, there is reasons. It's a, uh, it would be a spoiler. I, I am made, looking forward to it, though. I've made terrain in two days for it. Yeah, you're kind of, you, well, you're always like a craft god when it comes to, like, getting stuff set up. I mean, it's not the most beautiful, but for something we're going to use once, yeah. twice. Here's the thing. Like, you always say that, but it's like, no one else I know puts in the effort, like, and I'm talking about myself as well. No one else I know puts in the effort to actually make terrain at the consistency that you do and, and at the volume like you have terrain all over your house yeah currently over there there's the adobe buildings we got yeah, over we got here is the grass and, and the minis like you have a whole setup for like D and I, I do and most of it's made out of xps foam yeah and, and you have like 3d printed stuff and like i need to get a new 3d printer because the one i can't use the one at work anymore because we switched to Chrome and it runs only on. Uh, I would say look Windows. into the any cubic models if you want. If you're willing to do, uh, if you're willing to do resin, they now have the uh, non-toxic and water soluble uh, resins that you can use. I won't lie, I thought about still doing a PLA one, but because they got the PLA wood, and it's like, what happened? Well, I didn't carve it, but I made a miniature out of uh, PLA teak. Give me a little bit of that uh, middle cheese with the prosciutto. The the which cheese? The middle cheese? Uh, not the the other the other one that's not yeah that one. Because there's two smoked ones. It's the alpine one and then the smoked gouda. Which one's the alpine one? It should be the one right next to the white cheddar. That's not the this one. Yeah. Okay. I want to give that a shot too. Mm. They're three for three on their cheese, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's expensive. I'm, I mean, it's not like super expensive. It's like six to twelve to fifteen dollars for like a block like that. <laughs> it's a, it's a higher, it's higher than. I didn't your... pay fifteen dollars for mine. I, my most expensive one was nine. Mine no, was eight. The Alpine was most expensive. I, I, I love, going... Al I love Alpine cheese. Yeah, I was going based on uh, what the. What, what's his name told me? But because he said the cheese ranges from like six to fifteen. Now let let's let's go back talking about with uh Bruhaha and how it first started. Is when it first started, now the Brookshire's, the grocery store that we have here, really picked up on some high end cheeses. Yeah. And at the same time there was a boom in like and it's not nearly as good as it used to be. No, because we used to have so much craft we used, beer here. We used to be able to get North Coast. We used to be able to get not just North Coast, but any sort of West Coast or Midwest. I know, but I'm just I use North Coast because that's the one where you learned that you like a good red with red seal. Yeah, and we both really loved uh, old. God, I can't remember old eighty one the, yeah. the the train theme stuff. Then there's Scrimshaw the Saint. Yeah, oh, Scrimshaw is like. I would say the platonic ideal of a, like a pilsner or like what you would call a light beer. It's not, I don't really call it a light beer. I, like I don't, it's a lighter beer, 
but like pilsners are great beers uh in the u.s they kind of have like a stigma because most most american beers are a light a watered down version of pilsner yeah but a real pilsner has a lot of flavor has a lot of taste but it's light and it's crisp and it's just it's always so good cold and then it makes the best of the best oh yeah old rasputin yeah but uh so we would get what we would do is we'd go to brookshire's and we would get fancy beers and then we started going to tenori's wine cellar which is where we got all of our beer for tonight yeah uh, even our gas stations, like the Tiger Mart. And, yeah, Tiger uh, Marts and, and, the, and, the and, the sem- and the 76s. Well, they didn't have 76 back in the day, but uh, the Smoker's Paradises right. and all used those. used to have a lot, like, remember Morimoto's Soba Beer? Yeah. So we, what we would do is we'd go out there, and, like, the best the best night we had was the first time we got a hold of uh, a real good Belgian quad and had the Trappist cheese that was made uh-huh. with ale as well. And then Berkshire stopped carrying it. Yeah, just like literally the week after we couldn't find it. Uh, No, like some of my favorite beers are no longer sold here. And I found it doing this. Like Warsteiner was one of my favorite beers. They're double. Not here. Yeah. Well, Third Shift, Batch 18. Yeah. Were good for a cheaper beer. Like, shit. What was I thinking? Oh. There are like... I have forgotten more beers than... I know, but I mean, so it was so good, and it's like, that was how we realized there's good beer, because before that, we really had been drinking High Life while playing Exalted 2nd Edition. Yeah, well, we would, it would be High Life, it would be maybe Coors Banquet. Yeah. Or it would be, if we were going to get real fancy, it would be uh, either Abita or probably Blue Moon or Newcastle. Yeah. Newcastle can't find here anymore. Really? Yeah, I've I've only found it once or twice. Yeah, which is weird because that's a mass-produced beer. Yeah, but I mean, it's also like you can really only find Lone Star over in West Monroe. Yeah, oddly enough, still find Land Shark, which is wow. Yeah, I mean, like Land Shark. I, I believe Land Shark was uh, Jimmy Buffett's uh, beer. Yeah, and it didn't really do that well, as far as I remember. No, but it's. It's one of those... Yeah. Anyway, speaking of Pilsners, we are talking about the platonic ideal of Pilsners, but we have one from Great Rap, which is a local... Not local here, but local Louisiana brewery. It's, uh, over in Shreveport. Uh, uh, Shreveport has two breweries now. Yeah. Wh- which the other one? I the... keep forgetting the name. It's named after the street that it's on. Uh, there's so many... I mean, we actually have a good bit. We have Parish. We have Abita. We have Great Rap. We have... Uh, Flying I, Tiger, which is l- local, local here, um, and has one of my favorite beers. They're blonde. Uh, there's Tesh, by uh, Cambridge or wait, Cambridge, Cambridge is, is Parish. Parish. Yeah. Uh, Nola. There's Nola. Yeah. There's another one in New Orleans too. They tried to bring back Jackson Dixie. It didn't work though. Yeah, Dixie. I I think they renamed Dixie to just beer or some shit. Like some weird. Stuff. Well, I mean, Dixie's owned by Coors, I believe. So Show Pony, Bohemian style Pilsner, twelve fluid ounces, four point five percent alcohol per volume. That's not bad. Great show art of a lady riding a very enthusiastic horse. You know, I love it. It it it's like okay, so. Our local brewery, Flying Tiger, has similar s- sort of stylization with their art. Like if you get the Bomber Blonde, it has like a... Uh, it has a pinup from the side of a World War II plane. Yeah. Uh, Man-at-Arms used to have Chenault walking, and now they have a Tuskegee Airman. Yeah. Uh, the Milk Stout, Final Resting Place. Oh, no, Final Resting Place is the double IPA, has the crashed airplane. Uh, I forget what the Milk Stout is. Uh, it has a plane on it, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, Flying Tiger, if you haven't figured it out, is uh, aviation and World War II themed. But... Uh, because here in Monroe, uh, I'll dox this, I don't care. Yeah. We have Selman Fields, which is our airport. Or airport. Uh, Selman Fields during World War II was the only place that you could get from not having your wings to flying in one location. Like So during World War II, you could come in just, I've never flown a plane before, and when you graduated... You were an army pilot. So, I mean, other places you'd have to transfer around. Also, Selman, uh, General Selman worked uh, with, uh, had the Flying Tigers, which were, I believe, if I'm remembering right, were American pilots flying for the Chinese Air Force against the Japanese before we officially entered the war. 
Okay. I think it's along those lines. I'd have to go back to the. We need to go check out the the museum out there because mm. it's that actually bourbon good. is good. I haven't been there in a long time. All right, so let's uh, let's give Show Pony a shot. Mm. First off, it smells good. I like that. That is an enjoyable beer. There's a little biscuit flavor to it. Yeah, that. that? I mean, but you need that in a good filter. Like that biscuity. It, it's not. Of... It's not biscuit forward like a an amber is or an English ale because English ales are heavy yeah. on the biscuit. This is like incredibly like drinkable. This is this is a damn good long beer. This yeah. is after I've been outside in the heat. Yeah, like the this one is good, but I can only have one or two of these before I have to like put it down. I think one is enough for me. Not because it's bad. It's just. Like when it comes that, to IPAs, that actually that was actually heavy. Yeah, like when it comes to IPAs, they a, a great IPA is still heavy enough to where I'm like, uh like I don't I don't want to have another one because I want to let it sit for a second. It's not even like the alcohol content; it's just the way it sits on your stomach. Like an older Rasputin, like I can only have one older Rasputin at a time. What well, you or the monster? <laughs> Why does everybody say that? I can drink I could drink a whole four pack in a in an evening of drinking. I could drink a whole four pack of them. Well, an evening is fine. Like, I mean, I could have two or three of these in an evening. Like if we were at a bar if we were hanging out and grilling. You know what? Yeah, I'd only have two if I was grilling, because old Rasputin and Heat does not mix, yeah. No. Like you would want one of these two if you're in the heat. No, I, I definitely want Show Pony over yeah. uh, Surf. But no, Show Pony is a great pill. That, that is that, good. That like, is... I, I, I will say this: that's probably not going to survive tomorrow's Dara One. No, no, that's probably going to be my go-to. Like, I'm gonna, I'm probably going to pick one. Like the, I actually, I don't know, because yeah, those two. I'm, I'm still scared. Like, okay, so. Trappist or like monk style beers have a reputation like for anyone that doesn't it's basically wine yeah it it, it gets into the barley wine territory and the and i'm like looking at the label right here it says 10 percent alcohol that's like twice as much as this one and like three times as much as this one it's concerning yeah so yeah. Like, I'm looking at 10 and 8% alcohol on the back of these bottles. But, all right, so, uh, you know what? Finish yours, and then I am uh, going to keep us on the Pilsner train. Oh, we got another Pilsner. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, the Pilsner Apple. Yeah. So, show pony, we still have five, and we'll split those tomorrow. Maybe give one to Jed. Yeah. And this is the... Now, this is a new place for me, which I'm excited to to learn about because we haven't had a lot of like new places start out here. But you've had Jester. You've had Jester. Have, I, I feel like I haven't. Maybe I just forgot about it. it we've, it's usually Jester Head's kind of like clown shoes uh, when it used to be sold all the time here. It's usually the big bottles. Oh, okay, okay. Like, uh, do you remember uh, when I brought the one that had like the the... The uh, warthog yeah. that was foaming at the mouth, and it made, the beer's name translated roughly, roughly to like rabies that I had over at uh, Extra Life. Yeah, and then I ended up getting okay. Claire. That was Jester uh, Jester King. A lot of times, Jester King is heavy on the hops. They make a lot of sours. They make a lot of uh, IPAs. No, you saying that has made me hesitant on this beer. No, oh, so fine. this is a Stock Plains Pilsner. Brewed with 100% Texas malt in collaboration with Tex Malt, Austin, Texas. Uh, Pilsner brewed with malt from Texas. Okay, yeah. Uh, 4.8 alcohol by volume. I think it's higher than the last Pilsner. Nope. This one was... Uh, I thought that was like actually... 4.5. Okay, so it's not three times. It's like it's those two are about double the last two beers. Yeah. Like this one. How much was... Earthwax is on the IPA. 6.8. That's why I was like, maybe we should... <laughs> maybe we yeah, should... Yeah, you're right. You're right. So, oh, the it's... prosciutto with the brie was real good. Uh, I'm just... I'm just foregoing the crackers now. 
I like those crackers. The crackers are good. I just, you know. Also, the art on this is really cool. It's got a deer skull. And their logo, or the logo for one of the places, is Longhorns coming out of a barrel. Mm. So it's either Satan barrel or Beef Cow Texas barrel. Again, with the way Texas acts, sometimes it's one of the same. You're getting yourself some... The brie is super good, dude. The brie is really good. But I'm going to go with this Hunter's Cheese. Give me a Hunter's Cheese with some of that salami. Not if you say it that way ever again. Okay, I'll say salumi. All right, I'll accept that terribleness. All right. Okay. So before we inject ourselves with cheese and salt. Ooh, smell that. Okay, okay. That, I, that, I, that's I'm, a really good wheat smell. I, I'm, I'm leaning into it. Okay. Ooh, did you get chocolate at the end of that? A little bit, but I'm just... Mm. I, I like the other Pilsner better. The other one's better. This one has a little bit more of a bitterness to it. Yeah. Like you, uh, you that, I, feel that. Like, I don't know if it's... Maybe it's more of a roasted flavor than chocolate. I, it might just be more of a roasted flavor, or it might just be the hops they use, but this one has a more bitterness than the show pony. I, like, when I like Pilsners, I like them on the malty, biscuity side. And not so much on the bittery. I got a mouthful of cheese. I mean, it's not. It's not like I wouldn't drink this again. Let me. Let me just say that now. It's better than I thought it was going to be. Because we still got three more cans. What? Mm. You good? Cheese tried to stick. Oh no. God, that that truffle salami is really good. It almost overpowers everything. <clears throat> but we still got three more cans of this, so. Yeah. I really like that Hunter's cheese too. Like that was pretty solid. That that is a that is a good flavor, right? Like. Oh. I was scared we put I put too much on the board. Is there still more in the back in the kitchen? Or did we eat it all? No. I only use about half of each for both me, you, and Emily. Nice. We we might have to take a break and refill because also I really do dig these crackers. Mm. The crackers are the only ones we're, Look, we're I, running low on. But I'll be honest. Like I thought you were about to talk bad on the crackers. Like No, no, no. The crackers, like what I'm saying is that we yeah. only have a little bit of crackers. Yeah, because we bought the single box of the fancy crackers. Yeah. But you know what I'm going to say with this? This is not a lot more beer. It is an out in the heat beer, but oh, like I could see myself drinking this while I'm grilling. No, no you want to know what this would be really good with? When you have a big freaking pile of sweet Texas barbecue brisket. Ooh. Eating something sweet with this, I could see that. Like it doesn't really go well with the saltiness we have on the table. No, but you know what? This would also be a good beer to cook with. That I could see that. Like, put it in a chili or something. Mm. Use it as the base of a... Or put it into a roux as you're making it. Just start thinning mm. it down. Mm. I mean, that could work. Yeah. I'm happy with this. We, Jed, Kyle, you're missing out. Mm. It's okay. It, it, it's not about them. We're just being mean to them. Are we? But, I mean, Jed... Okay, the only one that's missing out is Kyle because... Like, I'm pretty sure Jed's going to be able to taste at least some of these tomorrow. Yes, because we, we're we going to have a lot of... We need to keep one can of each. For Jed. Well, not just... You know what? Because we do have the back of Hewitt's fridge coming up. Show Pony's not going to make it. No, Show, Show, Show Pony is not going to make it. I like Show Pony. I like... Of the two Pilsners, Show Pony is my favorite. Of the beers we've had tonight, Show Pony's my favorite. Yeah. Like so far, definitely show pony is. I would say show honestly. I would say show pony. I would say this IPA and then this one. Yeah, but it's all three. Like we'll keep we'll beers. keep one of the Jester Kings and we'll keep because the did burial come in a six pack or a four pack? Six pack. So we'll keep one of the burial in the back too. Yeah, like the uh, like so far. I mean, we haven't had a bad beer. No, I am worried about this other one I bought. Or did you buy this one? 
I, I bought the two. I sh I think I bought two Jester Kings. No, no, I bought. You this bought one. you bought that one because I showed you the artwork for it, and, and I uh, liked it. And then you bought, and I bought the Jester King, and then I bought, I believe, the blue bottle. Yeah, and I bought the triple. Yeah. God. Oh God, I like how I buy Saint Bernard's triple, and then you get Saint Bernard's ABT twelve. Like you got a science fucking experiment. I know, right? And we got another cold India Pale Ale. A, a cold. I have not seen cold India Pale Ale. So I think, did I buy this one or did you? I'm pretty sure you bought this one. Okay, so I kind of like the artwork. I didn't expect, okay, so we actually do kind of have a theme here because we bought India Pale Ale's Monk Beer or Trappist Beer and then we bought Pilsner's. Uh, also, this is also a great raft. Yeah, and we bought great, we bought three of the same... <laughs> Two. Okay, we got Jester King, which is his own company. I believe this is Jester King. Is or it? Is it? Or Burial. Burial. Okay, so this is the only one that's different. Okay, and then I got this, but hold on, let me read this, because Burial, uh, the dude grabbed the one I really wanted to get, because there's one that Em and I tried, and it gave money no, to No, this crew. was from North Carolina. Okay, January. this is from North Carolina. There is one that was a beer for the crew, uh, made for the crew of Zulu, mm. and they got part of the profits from it. Ooh. But this is a cold India Pale Ale, six percent alcohol per volume, sixteen fluid ounces can. Uh, feel this way forever, and it's somebody floating, and it looks like they're floating uh, next to a kind of a, a shale deposit, uh, like reservoir. Oh, uh, the Lassophobia. It's not the last. Okay, look. The Lassophobia. Yeah, whatever. Look, okay. If we went to like a quarry that was full of water, and I know that it's deep. But, like, we're just swimming around having fun, jumping off of shit, going down, and then swimming to, like, a raft or something. That doesn't mess with me. Open water that I cannot see land near me. Weirdly enough, the first scares me more than the second. Okay, look, there's no fish in there, and there's nothing that's going to come up and get me. Unless you think about that weird one from, what was it, uh, the Crypt, or Crypt Keepers movie? Well, the... With, oh, the, oh, with the Bob oh. and the kids on the yeah, the I know, yeah. Hill, not tales from the crypt. Fuck. Was that a creep show? Creep, creep show, show yeah. too. Yeah. Oh. No, uh, for some reason, like the ocean doesn't scare me as much. Okay, look, I did not realize. Like, I have two fears that I realized. One, I do not like diving underwater and seeing shit that should not be underwater. Like diving under and there being a statue. Gives me a little bit of a heebie-jeebie. Okay, I get that. Like because... uh, some, some mechanophobia. But also, it's like when you go... Like, the the reason I love when, like, a ride has, like, dark-colored water is so I can't see any of the animatronics workings underwater because that triggers me a little bit because not because it's scary. Mm. Like, okay, let's say, like, you're riding Pirates of the Caribbean and it breaks down and you got to get out the fucking boat and walk. There's all these mechanisms underwater that trigger the same phobia for me as, like, grass brushing up against your leg underwater. Yeah, I mean, I, I do get that. Like, the but, biggest thing for me, if I were going to say this, like, okay, I have a, a site, like, even if there wasn't, like, a deadly current in the Washtenaw River, uh, I would have, pro I've always had problems, like, swimming in it or being in it because it's murky and, like... Like you explained, like the sub mechanophobia, I get that because if I see like a car at the bottom of a lake, oh, that's probably because there's a dead body in that too. Yeah, like you, you're like mentally like, oh fuck, something fucked up just happened here. Okay, like here's one of the things that scared me the most when they went into the cisterns under uh, Istanbul. They saw that uh, the way the cisterns were built is they broke Greek temples apart. And use them to help build the the support system for them, because like they basically had kind of like how New York and Tokyo have massive empty caverns that they built underneath them that are like complete. They're a hundred percent a cavern. They're a man made cave. Yeah. But if you were to be in it without all the water, it would look like a fucking parking garage. And one of them, the reason they found out that, or the reason they found this out is they looked in the water and there was Medusa's fucking eight foot face like Jeez. part of the wall like the part of the lower wall had been ripped out of a temple and used as support they reused the marble and the stone 
And so here's my deal. Like if I was diving underwater, all of a sudden there's a giant Medusa face. I'm hitting the surface immediately because fuck all that noise. Tangentially related. Apparently they've had, is this true? Like in Rome, they've had trouble trying to build the subway because they keep running into like ancient. Yes. They're like, oh, we're digging here. Oh, we can't dig here because now we found... We found part of a fucking temple that sunk. Or, or, or we found a coliseum. Or, or we dig deeper down. Oh, shit, it's Etruscan shit. Yeah, it, this is the thing like America doesn't have to worry about. Yeah, we just dig. Like in Rome, they're like, holy fuck, we have too much fucking history. Can someone else have some of this history, please? We need our subways. We need All of a sudden, New York's cities. digging and finds a Roman coliseum under it. Like, what the shit? <laughs> it's not even a Roman. It's a Canadian Coliseum. Why is this here? Where did this come from? So they could commit war crimes in private. Yeah, they commit war crimes while saying, sorry, sorry. No, dude, there's sections of the Geneva Convention written because of Canada. No, I know, I know. Like, we, we, like sorry, Canadians. You, you have, like, the nice neighbor vibe going on, but also there's, like, skeletons in your basement. Like, Amer- look, Canada... America, America puts ours out in the front yard like a spirit Halloween. Chris yeah, the thing is, it's like spirit Canada Halloween. gets to only gets a pass on the global stage because they're right next to America. Let's be real. And they're pretty close to Russia. Like, in general, there's two really big, terrible countries on either side, and Canada can get away with their atrocities and just be like, oh, look what America's doing, eh? And they're like, don't, don't worry about the mass graves. Don't worry about what we did to the native population. Don't don't let's not talk about how we broke the treaties. Anyway, uh no, like I didn't so like if I see mechanics and stuff underwater, or like worse is let's say there's a there's an animatronic that's supposed to work, but it doesn't. So there's a broken piece of technology underwater. That flips the switch for me. Like, if I was in the Thousand Leagues Under the Sea ride before they took it down and I saw the sea dragon, you know, doing all of this weird shit that's while it's partially underwater and i'm partially underwater that wouldn't mess me up okay does the but the the image of the broken ass dragon uh that had been abandoned for like a year or two before they tore the road down or the ride down that triggered something with me okay so what about the titanic no the titanic actually fucks with me a bit okay shipwrecks don't mess with me as much because there you go. Oh. I started your cracker. Can I get a salami? Yeah, you can. Like, shipwrecks don't mess with me because uh, I'm not diving to them. We'll finish yeah. this before we crack it up. Yeah. Like, I'm not the one diving. Diving down to a shipwreck, I'm totally not cool with. One, because it's a shipwreck, and like, unless it's an intentional one to make a riff, a reef, not rift, but a reef, I don't want to go down because it's a grave. Yeah. Uh, diving on a ship that's been used to make a reef i also don't really like because of the i might get trapped underwater yeah because i'm not an experienced diver i think that's but, a part it, of it with me but, yeah. but it doesn't like it's not like ooh creepy but like knee deep water and a busted ass like jump scare yeah it doesn't it, work okay my biggest thing like okay when you look at the titanic and you look at some of the foot i think it was james cameron that Mm -hmm. had like some of the he got the drone in the titanic the reason why it freaks me out is we talked about this earlier with uh liminal spaces oh i get that now yeah okay i can understand and just the feeling of unease of a space that used to be like you're looking at all this stuff and it's supposed to be like bustling with people, but it's not. All right, there, that, there literally were thousands of people on this ship. Yeah. There are people, excuse me, there are people that went down in this ship, have since perished, no remains left. I, was say, I hope they perish. If you get down there, half I've been stuck here for years. I'm immortal. Like, fuck off, Dio. He's like, I just realized I'm immortal. At the bottom of here, I saw that one ship implode. What the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) Just some fucking dude, like, watching the fucking ocean gate sit there all day. (laughs) They messed up. Even I know you don't put self-tapping screws through the internal skin that almost reached the external skin of a submarine. 
Oh. And I'm from the 1919s. The 19 teens, not the 1919s. <laughs> That's the end of World War One. But no, like, okay, so like, I didn't realize this is a fear I didn't realize I had until I was introduced to it. Like, okay, not really liking catwalks or being high up. And my legs not really enjoying it. I figured that that that's normal. Mm -hmm. uh, not liking weird shit underwater, touching you, or like uh, best way to describe the worst nightmare for me would be that really janky ass dinosaur ride in Pigeon Forge that like half the yeah. shit doesn't work and you're in water. That does not vibe with me. But I didn't realize that I didn't like open water till the first time I was on open water and it was in Alaska. Okay. So like at first we're going around and. First thing that freaked me out was a whale, baby whale was on the left-hand side of the boat. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I go to the other side of the boat when the baby whale dives down, and mama whale comes up, and she's bigger than the boat. I'm like, I didn't see you. I didn't see you show up. And you just went, boop. I get to look directly into a whale's eye, and I'm like, oh, I ain't shit. Yeah. And then it dives back down, and the boat does this. I'm like, okay, that's not cool. And then they go, it's actually over, it's a mile down to the bottom of this fjord that we're going through right now. I'm like, cool, didn't need to know that. Um, <laughs> because literally a fucking small plane, small jet, the little passenger liner, came up out the water, winked at me and dove back down. I'm like... Hmm. It's weird. Like, I thought I was going to have, like, when I, like, okay, so... I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I never really went to the travel a lot. Never got to see the beach until relatively recently. I thought I was going to be like really scared of the open ocean and it doesn't really do anything. It gives me a kind of a feeling of wonder and feeling of like serenity. Okay. Being on the beach and staring out the ocean. Cool. Once you've seen, you know, a creature way bigger than you appear and disappear into the ocean. Yeah. The only things I saw were like, I, we saw some dolphins and we saw some sharks, things like that. Dolphins are terrible creatures, but they are pretty. Yeah, I mean, they're like Canadian geese. They're yeah. pretty to look at from a distance. They're terrible up close. Like I would, like I don't know. It, it, maybe it's something I have to experience to actually know well, for sure. But like, like when I think of the ocean, I kind of have a feeling of like, I okay. I will say this. If I was out in the middle of the ocean, I'd be scared fucking shitless. See, that's that's what yeah. I'm saying. Is, is yeah, that's what happened with me. Like, like, like but the, it's not the ocean itself. It's the it, it would be like being lost in the woods for me. Okay, so here's the deal. Like the the whale was cool, but it's also like I'm not like okay. Look, you're taller than me. Like you're six four, six five. Yeah, I'm at or just under six foot. I'm not that small compared to most people we meet. I'm not small to most creatures we meet. Something being big enough to come up on the vessel, and it wasn't a small boat. Yeah. And it comes up as big. I was like, "Well, that's I'm not really scared. It's not really. A, it's it's a little unsettling. Like, well, I ain't like I said, I ain't shit." And it dives back down. And then five minutes later, I can't see land, and that's what caused like my heart to go and pick mm -hmm. up. And I'm like, "Hold on, logically, dude. Even if you could see land, you're not close enough to it. If the boat goes down, you're gonna die of hypothermia." My brain goes, "You can at least swim towards land and have hope as you die." And I'm like. You know what? That's actually a valid point, brain. That is a very yeah. valid. That's a terrible but valid point, brain. Yeah. The thing is, though, it's like I so, feel like I would have that sort of feeling in the middle of the woods if I don't. If I'm that was cheese, not a cracker. Hey, you know, I was expecting a crunch, and I got nothing but cheese. It's good. It's like it's good. It's good. It's, it's cheese. But no, I feel like I would get that in the middle of the woods or like in the middle of a desert as well. Well, the big thing is, is that. Like, okay, I, in the I, desert, yes. Woods, I wouldn't feel that way so much because my threats are only coming from up. Uh, my, my threats are coming from left, right, front, back. Like, maybe something out of a tree. I don't have to worry about anything underneath me coming up. Like, that's the reason I don't like the ocean. I realize is you're in it. Like, the reason I feel bad for fish, they're in a 3D death dome. It can come from whatever. Direction. Well, they that's, can come from my hook. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why fish are they're, they're blessedly dumb, so they don't have to think and fear this and have an existential crisis and float to the surface. That but one uh, catfish I caught that was like, "What the fuck?" I actually helped that catfish because it was wrapped in a line, and I took the line off after, before I threw it back in. But like with the woods, also I know I can find food. Yeah, I mean, 
my my point is that like it doesn't scare me like uniquely in the sense that like I don't think the ocean is like it has its own hazards. Yeah. But like being in the desert has its own hazards. Being in the middle of a tundra has its own hazards. Being in the middle of the woods or a savanna has its own hazards. Uh like if I'm foraging for food, I might get hit by a uh, rattlesnake and perish right, that right. way. So, like, I guess that's my view on it. Like, I do get the the last of like I would get the. Oh no! Is my wife correcting, baby? Oh, I I do get the thalassophobia when you go like deep down and everything, and you can't see anything. That's kind of like a anxiety inducing experience but i don't know if i have the lassophobia in the sense that you're saying but like it's totally I, valid i just i really don't like i didn't realize i don't like open water yeah um hold on a second my phone just buzzed oh it's timo tell him i order his trip or shift oh cool uh so here's my deal is i like if you watch like the thalassophobia videos people make like it's a giant mermaid that sinks their boat and now you're trapped out in the ocean swimming and it's going to come up and eat you no that that's fucking fake I, that's not scary to me someone falling off their boat and the boat still going and they're just kind of floating either with or without a life jacket yeah yeah in the i ocean. mean that that's I mean, that's, that's that's existential dread hitting right there yeah. not not some like i'm not super worried about a sea monster I'm more worried of being like, all right, I'm alone. Like the the like when I said you were watching the video that was recommended to us on YouTube, uh, sailing across the Pacific alone in my yacht or my uh, well yacht I think was the term, but it's like the the yeah, small the sailboats. It's like me, I would never want go. To no, I don't want to go out. And, one, if I'm going to go out and open wash water and sail, I got somebody with me. Yeah. Safety me safety measures, but also. The ocean is a fucking scary place. I mean, I do agree. Especially the Pacific. That's mm. like, I sailed across the Pacific by myself. Why? What's wrong with you? Did yeah, you I, hold on. Did you at least stop at a Jollibee? You stop at a Jollibee, get their three-way? Wait, no, they don't have a three-way. That's Skyline Chili. I don't, we don't have these places here. Jollibee serves fried chicken, hamburgers, and spaghetti. Why did I get that mixed up with Skylight? It's because we don't have them here. We don't have these restaurants here. Also, Cincinnati, your chili is bullshit. Yeah, fuck you, Cincinnati. You put, okay, look, I don't put beans in chili. I, I mean, I don't put Ohio in chili, so... Like, okay, if you were to put, like, some black beans or kidney beans, like, one can and a whole Dutch oven of chili, that's okay. I still think that chili should be peppers, meat, and onions. I like some beans and chili. However, when your chili is thinner than hot dog sauce and mostly baked beans. Man, their chili looks like something that comes out of a can and I can't abide by that. Nah. Yeah. Anyway. We just started war with Ohio. Oh, it smells good. Mmm. No one cares oh. about Ohio. That's pretty good, though. There's a weird tartness to it. There's like It's yeah. almost dry like a cider. It has a dryness and it has like a um, fruitiness. Give me a cheese. Give me a cheese. with smoke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That goes together. Mm-hmm. Now, it's still heavier than the Pilsner's, but... Yeah, it's not as heavy as uh, Burial was, though. No. Bur burial was... The I mean, this is still pretty translucent. Burial was a little bit opaque. Dang it, I'm drinking out of a McAnally's bottle. I think they look similar. I couldn't tell. I, I didn't really pay much attention to that, but this one has like some haziness, not a lot. But that's kind of the style now. Like it used to be crystal clear on beers, but now like having some haziness is like well, look, preferable. De depending on the beer, I'm 100% for hazy. I'm also for clear. Like, if I was to end up having a American Pilsner be hazy, like talking about like a Budweiser, a Coors, a Miller, I would not want to drink that in a thousand years because something went wrong because mm -hmm. they are supposed to, they are supposed to be like the pizza dough test. You hold it up and you can do like the window pane test and see through it. Mm. That's what they're supposed to be. They're water plus one. But 
if I'm talking about an IPA or I'm talking about a wheat beer, yeah, I want them hazy. I don't want to see through them. Double IPAs, definitely not. Stouts. Remember the one stout we got? I don't remember what brand it was, but we looked. You could see through the stout, like it was. I think I remember it, that. One. It was like a. It was like a dark. It was like a dark ruby tea, but you could still. I could still see you through it when we when we were drinking. It was like. It wasn't a stout. Yeah, it. It was one of those beers where it was. I don't remember if it was connected to a larger corporation or not, but it was one of those beers where it was like billing itself as a uh as a craft beer oh let's wait on that no i'm just moving this one closer because we're not doing the 10 percent before we do the eight percent and we're not drinking all of it until the cameras are off uh and we're, i'm we're also tasting. gonna say we should take a break before we we bust open the big boys yeah we've almost but, gone an hour yeah like i say that that that's a weird way to put it <laughs> But we gotta take a break before we open these big boys. We gotta bust open the big boys. No, uh, what were we talking? Oh yeah, that beer. Like I don't know what it was. It like built itself as like a specialty beer. Well, well, okay, here's the deal. We love micro brews. Yeah, we love craft brews. The problem is for every good craft brew, there's like ten bad ones. There's, okay, I was gonna say there's at least three bad ones that we've had. Like remember when we had that hemp ale? Remember the sorghum beer? The one that was gummy? Yeah. Like the one that left a gummy... Okay, I'm going to still say the worst beer we ever had was that hemp beer because that was bong water with alcohol. Yeah, it, it tasted like carbonated bong water. Like, and I don't... I've never smoked, as far as I can recollect. I've never smoked. That's a whole ass lie. That's a juicy smoulet lie. I might have done it when I was drunk. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. College was a hell of a time. College, you know, college is, you know, a time. Like, I never had, like, a crazy college. I, I've always been kind of shut in, so. I I had roomed with Dell and Phil. I remember it. Okay, we should talk about my D&D &D month. No, no, that'll be after the break. Finish, yeah, your, yeah. finish your beverage. And we we'll, were, we, we, are will, we will replenish cheeses. We're going to drink this, replenish cheeses, and we'll come back, and I'll talk about the time I destroyed you. <laughs> yeah. Here's the deal, though. Um, I'll say this about uh, Feel That Way Forever. If you drank two of these, you might. Like, this, I feel like this is, uh, it's not the highest alcohol we had tonight. This one punched harder. And it's, I mean, it's not like it actually punched hard. It's not. But like I, I felt that it might be because we've had some other beers, but I felt that one more. Yeah, like I'm actually having like I'm trying to again. I'm not saying any of these beers are bad. No, all of them are great. I'm like I tear them in my head because I want to. Well, that's what we're doing by the end of the night. Yeah, but like right now it's like kind of in a weird sort of spectral sort of place where I don't know where it places. Like, because there's a lot of qualities I like about it. I like the drinkability of it, but it's also very bitter, and it also, but it also has like a nice fruity taste to it, which is it does. Like, here's the deal, though. It also made me want to burp, but I also have cheese in me, and that's like keeping the burp trapped beneath it. But anyway, we will be right back. Uh, yeah, join us for once we have the big boys out. That came out weird. We are back. We are back. With more cheese, crackers, and meats. We, we made kind of a pile. I, I'm I, look, here, I'm going to give you a whole slice of brie and three salamis. I love me some salamis. Here's your salamis. Wow. Ooh, yeah, on the salami on its own, Excuse me. Get get powerful. Hello, tiny bacon. Mm. 
the stat still in vogue? Are the Zoomers doing this still? Mm. Man, dead air is very bad for a podcast. It is, but at the same time, we got a mouthful of really good food, and I don't know. Oh, that that is actually amazing with the fucking, like, the brie and the mm -hmm. uh, salami. I know, right? I made it. But I was going to say, I used to take, okay, so I'm going to go back to fears real quick before we pop this open. And I have a root. Here's a fear I have, especially since, you know, I have dental problems, so it's harder to chew for me. Your teeth falling out or turning into garlic? No. Uh, it's choking to death on food. Oh. So, uh, like, there was one time where I was on an edible that was legal here in the state of Louisiana because it was Delta. And I was eating a, uh, I was eating, I, I usually, when I'm at home, I don't eat like this, what he's doing right now. I'm glad you're blaming it on me. I'm blaming it on him. I eat, I never eat like this. Never. At home. I never have prosciutto. I just snack on at 2 a.m. in my underpants. Uh, with pickles. Get the pickles and I get the prosciutto. I wrap it. But that sounds really good. But no, I was snacking on some like cherry tomatoes once, and I was blitzed out of my mind. I didn't mean to be. It's one of the reasons why I don't do edibles anymore. Is because, like, when it comes to drinking, I know my limits, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if I start feeling it, I'm like, okay, it's time to kind of like, thank you. It's time to, like, step back a bit, right? That's Edible. when you grab some water. Yeah, I know when to grab some water. I can kind of, like, counter the effects. With edibles, it's like, oh, you're in for a ride now. It doesn't matter if you eat. You're in for that ride because you got to process everything that's going through. And I was just eating some tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, and there was that one instance where a cherry tomato... I think I was either coughing or something, and the cherry tomato just very slightly hit the back of my esophagus and came out. And it was that feeling like, oh god, I could have died then. And ever since then, I've developed a fear of like choking to death because of food getting stuck in my windpipe. That's especially, bad. especially now since like my teeth are like fucked up. It's very hard to chew. If you see me chewing, it's because I don't really have a lot of good molars left. Which so, is... On that same note, apparently nightmares about your teeth falling out are a chief sign of anxiety. I've never had that. Also, a weirder version of that, and I've had this dream, is your teeth turning into garlic bulbs. Like, you pull a tooth out because it's falling out when you look at it. There's a garlic bulb growing out of your tooth. That's weird. Yeah, I uh, thought I thought it was weird too, but apparently more than just me had it. The only time I ever had like tooth dreams is like the crown I have here, which is why I have like a Bucks Money look. Uh, this is a crown of it coming out and me putting it back in. You, yeah, it's a very weird dream. All right, so I got Saint Bernardus Chappelle. Why'd you put this? Why'd you make this shit all tiny? St. Bernard Trippel is a traditional Abbey beer that follows the classic Trippel style. In the water or the Watu region, a Trippel is often referred to as a Bernadette, a fine tribute that pays homage to the uh, Bernadette, Bernadette, the younger daughter of the Everest. Economic founder of the brewery in 1490 or 1946. So this is not an old beer. This is a more recent in the last century or two. Because yeah, this century, last century makes two, right? Yeah. But not not a hundred years quite yet. Uh Saint Bernardus uh Trapel is a blonde beer with a inviting golden hue. 
an impressive velvety soft head. I love a velvety soft head. It's a velvety soft head of froth. I love me a velvety soft head of froth. It has a slightly sweet aroma and a flowery, fruity taste in which mm -hmm. bitter and sweet merge harmoniously. I love to soak up that froth like... <laughs> You're just going to gulp it down. I'm just going to gulp down that froth. Thanks to the pleasant hoppiness, the mouthfeel of, oh, I this, love it when of it this beer is feel. nothing short of beatific. <laughs> <laughs> a hugely accessible beer that is surprisingly sure is light acceptable in, in, right? <laughs> in the heart <laughs> in the heart of the West Flemish Hop District. We brew a truly inspiring beer that fancies a lot of beer lovers. Special hop fermented dark and light beers have been produced in our establishment ever since 1946. And they are acclaimed as the best in the world. It is your heavenly nectar with, excuse me, in reach. But I'm burping. Are you good? You know why this is, this company started in 1946. Why? That was 1945. We canceled out the Nazi inv or the Nazi rule of Belgium. Oh. So this is this has been this is a reclaimed brewery. I feel uh, it's a uh, 9.4 fluid ounces one or one pint 9.4 four fluid ounces, eight percent alcohol per volume. Cool. I do love our cheerful little like 1950s monk. Yeah, he's just chilling there. So we got an Abbey L that is a triple. Oh, I did it right. I didn't send a cork flying and trip anybody out. Oh, shit. Smell that. I don't know. Smell that. That's heaven. That's a... That's what you call a triple. All right. So let's see. Are you as a golden as they said? Oh, shit. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> We're going to come back to you. I got a feeling it's going to be mildly sour, though, because sometimes triple Well, is... yeah, Belgians tend to have, like, sour ales. Well, except, remember the one we made? Yeah, that was... Oh, one. shit. That was 15% alcohol. Like, we... we I don't... I, I don't, don't even know how we did that. Uh, we, we put four pounds of rock sugar in that. Remember the, the amber rock sugar? Well, I didn't know the yeast would... Well, I mean, I guess we use a certain you, you, type. You did buy an actual quad yeast. Yeah, so maybe that was it. Oh, you smell amazing. Okay. Mm. That sounded so dirty. I'm mm. talking to a beer and it smells good. You... Mm. Mm. Oh, sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> oh, no one's watching us. We're just being fucking weird on the internet. Mm. If we ever get popular, it, it, someone's going to clip us. Drink it. This is your kind of beer. Oh. That's fucking pleasant. Oh, that's a heavy beer, though. Ooh. 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 This, this is a D&D &D beer for me. This is a... Mm. Give me a flag and shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no. You eat it, motherfucker. Mm. Oh. Tell me that does not fare well. Because this has like a slight sweetness about it. It has that sourness. And then you have that like saltiness from the cheese. From the meat. You know what would be good in this combination and I don't like it? What? A marmalade. Really? Think about it. What that kind of marmalade? Orange. Orange. That does sound good. Or a blood orange. Like you put on a cracker a little bit. You know a goat cheese and marmalade. I do love goat cheese, but it's one of the substances not in my house. Oh, yeah, because of... Yeah. Goat cheese and avocado. Yeah. It's such a... Like, okay, you're... Like, Emily has, like... Bless you. Emily has... Bless you. Emily has, like, two of the most obscure allergies I've ever heard. I'm allergic to nori. Oh, yeah, you... What is up with you two? Okay, like, look, the only food allergy I have is, like, 
a very small branch of the seaweed family. Then again, Ruby has an allergy to eggs, so... That's so terrible. I eat those things all the time. Like, Yeah, no, she, like... And it's always... It, it's a very weird allergy because... I mean, one, it's not like an allergy in the sense that, we, you know, you're... If she eats something that has cooked eggs in it, like a cake, is she allergic? No. It's like, just eggs. What, like, unprocessed eggs flare up her eczema for some reason. Weird. Yeah. It's a but, very weird thing. But like some... and it's something we've tested too, like so like you experimented on your wife. Yeah, I experimented on my wife. Shut the fuck up, Shell Tucker. I'm not Shell Tucker. Smash or pass though. Pass. Are you sure? It's a hundred percent a pass. That's true. It is a hundred percent. I was testing. No, havoc, havoc from Full Metal Alchemist. That's smash. Envy. I really don't like MB's attitude. It's not a physical thing. But the femme fatale look. That gets are, are, me. MB, are you thinking about lust? Is it MB or lust? Lust ha lust is Laura Bailey with the extendable fingernails. Okay, lust. That's who I'm thinking about. The one that there's a Omaki that she can crack walnut shells between her bust. Like, look. The femme fatale look. Okay, look. Lust. 100% smash. I ain't walking away from that. I die. Envy. If there is an attitude difference, smash. No oh, problem. Like, okay, look. Gluttony, hard pass. Like, when I did my uh, smash or pass, like, I was thinking about doing, like, Jessica Rabbit, but, like, I felt like that one's just too easy. That's that's way too easy. Also, the answer is that is pass. She is a happily married woman. That's true. That's, okay. Wow. You're right. You're right. And now, we respect now, that. Now, however, if Roger... And Jessica asked. So, so if Roger and Jessica were like, hey, we saw you across the bar and we like your vibe, you would be like, smash. Like, come on. Because he's going to make you laugh during the whole time. He's going to make balloon animals out of things. He's going to make, like... <laughs> <laughs> Just he's going to blow and... <laughs> Thank you. Oh, what just happened? Oh, that's Adobe being an asshole. Thank you, Adobe. Okay, I thought it was like OBS. I did connected. No. OBS is like, I'm tired of this conversation. No, also the detective from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's a smash. That's a smash for you? That's a smash. Are you, uh, do you have a thing for like hardened PIs? A hard dick could be good. Yeah. No, no, it's, he's a good guy, good heart. I think, if nothing else, hang out in the sauna and getting a beer with him would be amazing. Mm. I agree, I agree. And he has, like, a, you know what's so fucking weird about, like, speaking of who framed Roger Rabbit, there's a scene where he gives cigarettes to kids, and I always was like, why is he giving cigarettes to kids? It's like, oh yeah, it's like the 19 fucking 30s. Yeah, it's like 30s or 40s and shit. And, like, kids were smoking in their... Yeah, I mean, it was still healthy, like, teeth. It would help you with your, your gums. I'm like, that's 100% fucking false. Yeah, that's, like, the opposite of what it does. Okay. Uh, the, the girl that... I shouldn't say the girl, but the woman who played... Well, she was a girl when she played it. Uh, played uh, Dorothy. Uh, in Wizard of Oz. Uh, Judy Garland. Judy Garland. She was given cigarettes as a diet control because they thought she was getting... A little too plump. She died in 1967. She was like 40. You know what's so sad about that? Her mom it, was a sack of shit. Your mom was a sack of shit. And like Judy Garland was super pretty. She was. And like there were like so many like execs that were like, ah, you ain't right. Toots or whatever they say back in those days. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? Harvey Weinstein language, Harvey Weinstein language, Harvey yeah. Weinstein language. Yeah, I mean, the, the the sad truth is about Hollywood is there were Harvey Weinsteins dating back all the way to the start There's of still Harvey Weinsteins in, in Hollywood. Anyway, I'm gonna... God, that was good. That might be my new favorite. Oh, it's definitely up there. It, it's, it's up there. I mean, Show Pony is still riding pretty hard. Mm. But, like... But, um, like, the thing is, like, Show Pony and this, 
two completely it's almost unfair to compare them because they're on two different scales oh shit that's how much we still got you can drink that much no and we can't re-quirk it I mean this is why I put all that cheese on my board we're gonna be eating for a minute putting shit on Netflix yeah yeah Hey, like have you seen Netflix the, and cheese? Have you ever have you seen the newest episode of Dungeon and Dragon? Yes, I have. I, I have. I, I will happily rewatch it. Also, God fucking damn it! Let's see what the next beer is. No, no, I need just a minute. That's good because I'm gonna steal some more of the. Uh... Give me some of this. Give me what, what is this, the pancetta? Give me some pancetta. Mm, I love pancetta. I'll take this cheese back here. Mm. Now, mm. Uh, continue on. Well, like uh, Claire's going to do a kaiju smasher pass, which I am excited for. I am very tempted. Dude, because the last one I made, uh, the first smasher pass that I made, was supposed to be just uh, like start off as like Toonami and Adult Swim original runs. Like I had Carl on there. Carl's a pity smash. A petty smash? Pity. Oh. Frylock is a hard smash. Well, he takes care of his kids. Master Shake, hard pass. Meatwad, hard pass. Meatwad is a child. Yeah. Even if he's 36, he's a small, he's a child. Did you know that they had to fight to get the Frylock's voice actor, like, more money? Yeah, because he's not a SAG actor. Yeah. Did you know that Brack from the Brack Show's voice actor is a Amazon delivery driver? That's sad, man. Because William Street does some shady shit, dude. Like it's sad to see. Like okay, the, like the dude, the... Who, the dude who's the voice for Brack was not only the voice of Brack, but he was also a co-producer of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, the main producer of the Brack Show, and a co-producer on so many other projects, and he got fucked. Is, I heard, you know that uh, MC Chris got fucked by William Street as well. Uh, that's because someone made a joke about fucking him. Because uh, I'm not going to out anything on it, but they said that's what you like. And he, when he said I'm not comfortable with his work environment to uh, Turner Broadcasting, they went and asked William Street, and then MC Chris got fired. That's some bullshit. Like oh, it, it, it's, it's so it's, 100% it's so is. sad to see like some of the best stuff. Oh, guess where MC Chris is going to be on my anniversary? Where? Dallas, performing. But my anniversary is in the middle of the week. I can't... Emily and I were looking at trying to get to his tour, but we literally... The the closest events, like the ones that are not six plus hours away, which are on weekends. Yeah. Like, I don't want to like, hey, can you please watch my child while I drive to Memphis to go see... Yeah. Vets, vets sung by a small man energetically to my parents. I, but it, the, the, I would say at that point... Okay, like $20, $20 tickets. $20 tickets to the show equals a $100 plus dollar hotel stay plus food, which eventually makes the concert too expensive for me to actually... Yeah, yeah. Like, I understand where you're coming from. Though. But like... I want to see it like... Okay, a while back he was going to be in New Orleans on our anniversary and Emily and I were going to get tickets. But, like, family stuff popped up, like, right before we bought them. Like, some shit that happened... Okay, so recently, like, some of my favorite bands have started touring. Uh, a band I've been listening to non-stop for a while now, who I've already seen live. Uh, a band called Knocked Loose, which is a hardcore slash metalcore slash... Whatever you want to call it. They're kind of like... They're, they used to be considered more hardcore punk, but now they're, like, really fucking heavy, but... They make some good music, and they released a new album, and they're going to be very close, and I'm like, I really want to see them. But it's all lining up in thing at times where it's just not going to work out, because it's going to be right after the camp out, and like I, do, I really don't want to miss the camp out, honestly. True. But part of me was like looking at the tour dates, it's like, maybe I could like finagle something, and I can just go to Dallas and see Knocked Loose, and... I think he's going to be in Baton Rouge, like, on a Tuesday. And it's just one of those, like, even though I'm off work, yeah. Emily's not. And she she just got a new job, so there's yeah. not the, the time, yeah, like, yeah. leave time. You don't want to, like, 
push that. Why, why did you take off from work? I wanted to go see MC Chris. I really do. I really do. I would love to see MC Chris. You know how how much I don't care about music. Hmm. And you know that like me going to a concert is almost like I'd rather pull out my own teeth. Because it's a large crowd. There, it's loud, it gets hot, and there's like, I just don't dig concerts, or yeah. much the same reason as uh, I don't dig large crowds. Yeah. See, I'm, I want to go to this. It, it is, like, MC Chris would probably be one of the ones I would actually, like. Also, the fact, this is a performer that has been performing for well over 20 years, and the tickets to his show have been consistently low are 20 bucks like i'm almost talking myself into it right now yeah like shit the tickets to go see knock loose are already like i think 75 oh, sh- well that's or the nosebleed section though shit that is kind of bad like 75 pl- 75 not floor wouldn't be that bad yeah the thing is though being a hardcore band knock loose is like what? There's cherry in here. That's a. I'm scared of that. The description, the description, of, the description on the back is the same. Okay, well we don't have. No, it's not. Oh, Saber News. Add or finish your thought, and then I will read this. And oh no! Oh shit! Okay, go ahead. Saber Bernard's ABT twelve. Is a widely re- or widely regarded as one of the best beers in the world, and uh, therefore, also the real flagship of the brewery. It is brewed brewed with the classic quadruple. I'm really uh, glad. I'm really glad I did not buy three philosophers because two quads in a night. Oh my god, we'd be on the floor. Uh, classic quadruple style, and it adheres to the original 1946 recipe. Did you know that the St. Bernardus on every thousand labels of a 33 centimeter bottle is winking? Ah! Now that's why there's a little boop on the side. Ah! I'm not reading the rest of this because it goes back into like about the dogs. The hops and everything. And... Oh god, does this mean it's going to be pretty dark? Oh, that's a gorgeous color. Look at uh, that. That's like a gin color. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. This is a good one to send the night off on. Yeah. Oh, God. Smell that. Cue Smell it. Smell it. Cue it? You can't see through it. Oh, then we're doing good. Oh, that is a wonderful color. It's it a is wonderful... a, uh, for folks that are looking at it, you can kind of see it on screen. Mm. It is a delicious cher- dark chocolate cherry. Like, and it's hard to see through. All right, here, it. here, here. Here, do we no, need... no, no, no. We're going. We're, I got one piece of this truffle salami over here that has several pieces in it. We're going to drink this once without it, and then try it with. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So first off, I smell that candy sugar. There, there has to be that. Do you get cherries? I mean, I'm getting a little bit like a fruitiness. I can see where you're getting cherries from, but but not like red cherries, like the dark cherries. Like yeah, the... I, I know what you mean, like the like a black cherry. Yeah, like like I'm getting kind of that note. All right. Hello. Ooh. Oh. Mm. Whoa. Damn, ma'am. I like how we're like mm. fucking down. Mm. The salami cuts it a little bit. That fat. I knew the fat would do it. This is fucking amazing. It's a really good. It's a really heavy beer, though. This is not my favorite of the night, but this is fucking good. Like this is hitting up there with that Sink Sink Chimay that I love. Yeah, like the okay. Chimay is lighter though. Like this here's is, this the thing. Is, this is a fucking double shot of espresso coffee heavy. Yeah, like and when we again when we say heavy, we don't necessarily mean alcohol content. We mean which it does have. It does. Mm. It, it it more than like it's the heaviest. Like it is the. Mm. Most alcoholic, I would say, of the the night. I'm sorry, now I'm eating cheese. No, it pairs well with cheese. You know but what? Mm. this is good. 
It just like it's a strong flavor. Neither and it sits on the stomach. Neither one of these Saint Bernardus are a sipping beer. Nor are they. This is a special occasion beer. Yeah, like I would not. I would not get this. I mean, also it's fourteen dollars a bottle, fifteen dollars a bottle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's they. Not... They are not an everyday drinking beer. But you know what? These are both of these are our kind of beers. I like them. They are. I, I, I like fucking them. amazing. Oh, you know what? This would be good. You use this to make a reduction with cherry. To drizzle over pork. Like you better make that a super special occasion to spend. Like oh no no a hundred percent it's a special occasion. But think about it. we get ourselves a pork loin and we unroll it. You know like we mm. we roll it as we cut it. Put some good strong cheese. Put some good herbs in there. Chop up some onion. Put some garlic. Maybe some mushroom. Like make a make a mushroom onion uh, reduction. Kind of like what you do with like a uh, a Wellington, yeah. And you put it in, there and then you roll it up in a pinwheel, and then you put a little bit of this uh, ABT twelve, just a little bit in the bottom of the pan. You start roasting it, but then you use more of this with some cherries, and then you're drinking the rest. Yeah, you. I mean, you want to drink a little bit of or cra- not cherries, cranberries. Cranberries might actually, be and you make a little, you make a retardness that you pour over it. Add some salt, some garlic. We some. just described the most expensive pork loin we could make today, unless we shave truffles on it too. Yeah, which I would, be. which I would not, because that's like a hundred dollars a slice. Okay, look, look, I understand the trend to add truffles to everything, but like, truffles don't gotta be in everything. Like, at this point, you're just adding expensive ingredients to add expensive ingredients. Don't be Salt Bay. Don't be Salt Bay. Man, I watch Google Foods, and that man shits on Salt Bay so much. That's because Google Food knows what he's doing. I mean, Google is like, I'm going to do some stupid shit, but I'm going to acknowledge I'm doing stupid shit. I respect that. I respect the fact that he's like... This Marinating is... a steak in Sprite for four months was a bad idea. He's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to regret it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not going to lie. Almost every... I've only seen one side dish that was not a banger for me. And that is when he made, like, super spicy shrimp. With the cutoff... I mean, you're not of... a fan of shrimp, so... I'm not, but he used the cutoff beef fat to fry mm-hmm. the shrimp. There are, like, some side dishes where I'm, like... Now, the one where he made, like, a bowl out of mashed potatoes or some other root vegetable, and then he filled it with, like, a compote of beef and peppers and chili oil. Mm. And then you dipped fried potato skins in it. That looked fucking good. I'm feeling that last one. Yeah, like no. Uh, I do love it though. Like that no, is, it's good, but it's like like this is like hey, the camping trip. Mm. Want to get a bottle of that and split it? Uh, we might have to do that. Like getting a bottle of that and splitting it, I think. Or and then we can also get Brother Theolonitis from uh, Matches. <laughs> We're there for three days. Yeah. Okay. We're there for two days we can drink and then drive home like every anime convention we went to mildly hung over on the way back. Ruby is wanting to get uh, two warriors. Mm, more power to her. Anyway. Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, cool. So that's that's us drinking this. Do you yeah. want to... Like, Let's rank it. Let's rank it before we sign off. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, you know what? Your guest, you go first. Oh, I'm a guest. I'm just a guest on TVA. No, you're a guest at my house. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm one second. I'm eating brie. Mm-hmm. Brie. Mm-hmm. 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 
tastes like brie. Chris, this was expensive for both of us tonight, but this is mildly therapeutic. I know, right? Like, I we're making jokes, but we actually like, like we actually splooged a bit, splooged, splurged a bit. <laughs> so, I, I did not, but I'm not going to say that you couldn't. Like, we spent at least forty five dollars a piece on beer. And then spent close to, what, another 15 on cheese each? Yeah. Okay. So, here's the problem I'm running into. The the St. Bernadittes, or I, I, the ABT-12, mm-hmm. and the, uh, the show pony are probably my favorite of the night for different reasons, though. I mean, I'm not asking to... Like, so, if we're going to... Yeah, I mean, go ahead and pour some... We're going to have to finish that anyway. You can't cork this again. Yeah. But, I think I think we both revealed which is our favorite by pouring more of it before anything else. Today. Yeah. Okay, so, this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say Show Pony is my favorite... Like drinkable everyday beer, and this is probably my favorite, like, special beer. <coughs> so, I'm gonna put these two at the top, you know, they're gonna be equal to each other for different reasons. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be followed by this one because I like this one from uh, the triple, yeah, uh, and then the uh, what was it, burial. Burial is going to be my third. Your, your surf wax. And then Feel This Way Forever is going to be my fourth. And then that Pilsner. Now, I will say this. All the beers were good. Nothing was bad. It's just that one is not as favored as the others. And yeah. I, I'm going based on what I would feel I would want to have at any given moment. And... Like, if I were to say, hey, if someone was like, hey, you have all these good beers, which one would you pick? You would always have a beer or you would always gravitate. Yeah, I know. So. Mine is the same as yours, except for I would flip last place between uh, Feel This Way Forever and uh, Stacked Planes. Yeah, I think I think those two are pretty switchable. Honestly. I mean, it's... Okay. Cold India Pale Ale. I'm going to say this. I did not expect to like it as much as I did. Yeah. I mean, it's a good beer. It's just the bitterness on both of those beers kind of threw me off. I, I know, but the, my thing with the Pilsner is it's a bitter that I like. Yeah. It was a toasted biscuit. Yeah. And the the feel the same way forever. It was good. It's just... Yeah. It needed a little... I should say this. Like, when it comes to those two in last place... They're very switchable. I mean, like, I could go the same way as you with it. Thing is, on Bruja, you and me... Tend to be pretty, or like ninety percent the same. Jed's like eighty, and then, and then Kyle. Is Kyle like, Kyle's contrary. Kyle is the wild card. He is he is the wild bad boy of the group. I I mean I wouldn't call him a bad boy. He is the bad boy. He has a leather jacket and a motorcycle. Does he have a motorcycle? No, he has a busted rotting lawnmower in his driveway. That don't run. No, the engine uh, the engine seized. Yeah, I helped him get it over there. Yeah, that's on you. You know, I mean, I, I don't regret it. No, but, I mean, you need a whole new engine for it to run. But, hey, everybody, thank you for chilling with me and Chris for the last hour and a half or so. We're going to kill off the rest of this cheese, kill off the rest of the two Trappist beers, sleep probably like fucking babies. Yeah, and then tomorrow we'll be here playing the game of Darwin, which yep. is my... It is going. It is my campaign based in fifth edition, and it is based in my world or mine and my brother's world, called Yuta, which is a kind of dark crystal or Muppets inspired world. Well, that the reason when you said Muppet inspired world, this is why Jed and I are playing Muppets. Yeah, exactly. Like we... I, I'm kind of leaning into it now. Like originally, I was like, okay, it's going. 
like I mentioned Dark Crystal and Jim Henson in terms of tone and feel, but now you're like, I want to play a Muppet. I'm like, fuck it. Let's do this. No, I made it. Like, Jed was asking, you said something. This went, yes, it's Muppets. And he goes, I can be a Muppet. Originally, I wasn't going to be a Muppet. And then Jed kept going on about Muppets. So now my character is a, is a like, five foot eight velvety Muppet gunslinger. Now I just have you with as the man with no name but it's a muppet uh, it's Go- it's the gonzo you know it's a gonzo film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm a yeah. guy i'm a muppet with no name so if you enjoyed this uh see us tomorrow when i when they have a big battle and yeah i have a new belt you have a new belt i have a new belt uh, that belt does a lot more than just be a belt though Ooh, i'm glad for the plus one ac um oh, yeah. And some of the other weird shit it does. Anyway, thank you, folks. Thank you for watching. You can find us at teambonusaction.com. You can also find us as Team Bonus Action on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Blue Sky, Threads, and YouTube. You can also find us at bonus underscore team on in- or Twitter. Twitter. And currently, we are partnered with uh, St. Jude's. And if you could donate right now, we would greatly appreciate it because we need to defeat childhood cancer. As fast as we can, because cancer fucking sucks. Fuck cancer. Not literally. Yeah, anyway, don't, don't. Thank you very much. Hey, and since Knox is not here, I don't let your meat lull. Not everybody. Oh, God, we're still on. Thank you for tuning in to another Bonus Roundtable podcast brought to you by Team Bonus Action. If you'd like to find more out about us, you can go to our website at teambonusaction.com or you can check us out on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube as Team Bonus Action or on Twitter at bonus underscore team. And since Knox is not here, don't let your meat loaf.